Hello, we are back and ready for more. So, oh yeah, so I, I, I'm gonna work today in a different computer, so uh, you might not see uh, the same exact display, but th this should work. So as in the previous one, I'm gonna start off in the Uniprot. And this time I'm probably gonna be picking up a new new protein so be ready so well I don't know how many of you are there I should set up my mobile phone to monitor the situation if you have seen all any of the previous videos I'm I welcome you back I hope you benefit from what we're gonna see today and yeah so this is yeah this is this is missing my basket so for purposes of the current example i'm gonna go for a classic protein is well classic is not always the best example because it's a tetramere, it's an allosteric binding protein. So whereas biochemically speaking, it's the it's the real or the greatest origin of most biochemical protein based or focus analysis, they don't really translate there. Not a lot. So we'll stick to it, but with some caveats with a pinch of salt if you will now i hope you can see i'm gonna make my representation larger that should be fairly easy to read and still keeping handy uh, yeah that's better keeping handy the fact that there's crystallographic structures so there, there's two things I want to talk about this in this time uh, around, and it's one. You can work with sequences inside Uniprot. Basic analysis, which will be something like alignment, homology, mm, correlations between structure and function. Uh, conservation quad residues are well part of the active side of the binding side the post translational modifications and others they still well we still if we were to analyze the three-dimensional structure over here we will still need to find a viewer to do that a program where we will do just that analysis of these structures um, how to do it? That is always the question. How will we go about doing that, integrating both the sequence as well as the structure? Well, it's actually fairly easy. I'm going to first uh, go to some of the steps we did before, and it's here, reviewed. I'm going to just select the reviewed sequences. Here we go because they are homo sapiens they are pretty much only homo sapiens proteins but not everything is just um, hemoglobin there's gonna be a couple of things that are not hemoglobin and that fit here because they are mm, well because they are proteins associated with hemoglobin Uh, no, I'll leave it like that, just not too loud. Sorry, I, I'm taking care of the progeny. So what I'm going to do is just stick to these three proteins. Here in this browser, I already modified this in such a way that the sequence, the codes, the gene names, and the protein names, the organism length, and availability of 3D structures is shown. 
you will notice that for hemoglobin beta and alpha, the richness of these structures is quite large, whereas for other subunits, epsilon, zeta, delta, even the gammas, one and two, there's few structures, if at all. Luckily, or probably just because the proteins are really interesting, uh, there's structures for all of them. So, what do I want to show you? Let's, let me show you this. This is the way I usually look for this program every single time I want to install it. UCSF for the University of California in San Francisco, Chimera. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that I was playing Dragon Ball In general, just go to downloads and you will find a version that you can easily use. I like Chimera because it's very flexible. E scripting is fairly easy to learn and apply, but also, as you can see here, it's available for Mac, Windows and Linux. So nobody should have any trouble using it. Getting a license is as simple as just uh, clicking on the download and agree to the license. Everything works out of the box and except maybe in Linux where sometimes video drivers are an issue, you should be able to run it just straight straight away, just right out of the box, as I said. If you don't have it, get it. It should be a fairly big download, but it's totally worth it. So I'm going to launch mine. Okay, I'm gonna just leave here for a second while you download yours. Uh, let's see. Mm, -hmm. Well, you can see mine. I'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds to get yours. In the meantime, I'll just step out, uh, be right back. Sorry, uh, some technical problems here. So, as I was saying, it should be fairly easy to get your download for this Chimera program and be ready to roll. Now, uh, I usually have this as a default setting for my Chimera, that is the window, the big window we see here, as is, that's where the visualization is gonna happen. So I set that to be about half of the size of my screen. Then these two windows, the so-called model panel and the viewing panel, which you will find here in favorites. That is a, a favorite by default, so you don't have to worry about looking it up and activating it. Well, maybe activating it. So in favorites, you can find it. You click, there you, you have your model panel now. And the side view, or uh, it's a tab in the viewing panel. These two panels I like to have handy and maybe in a position that are uh, roughly out of the way because, and I'm gonna hide myself for a second, because in this side view, you, you are gonna be able to see what you have in this visualization screen or window. L let me emphasize that, that visualization window is gonna be for the 3D structures, not for, well, not really for anything else. So you will visualize 3D structures here, the the models, the number of models and what they are here with their name and the viewing aspect of what's over here on the side view. Of course, the side view is gonna be, this will be the front and over here you will have the side. Since, yeah, that's, that's better. You don't have to see me larger than life. Now, what are we gonna do? Well, first, there's several things we could do. For starters, we could fetch 
structured by ID. Now this is a little bit misleading, misleading because it's not only structures. Here, of course, there's a large list of structural database. Uh, for example, the PDB, the RCSV, uh, Viper EDS for electron density servers, EMDB for electron microscopy electron density servers, PopChem, of course, for chemicals, not for proteins or macromolecules, and Uniprot. So here, what Uniprot allow, is going to allow us to do is to import proteins based on their code or the gene name. And because we have some gene names over here, we could do that straight up. So what do you say? Uh, NF human. So we could try, I'm going to use this one because there's only one structure. So just simple copy and paste. And uh, let's see what we can use. I'm going to if you look down here in these tiny letters you can find ignore any cache data which stands for the cases where you have already downloaded this structure but you don't want to use that one you want to download a new one and keep dialogue up after fetch if i am to click uh, fetch web page close uh but not help. If I click the first three buttons, left to right, the window will close. The action will be performed and the windows will close. If I click health, this window wouldn't close, but I will get another window with help. This one is going to keep the window open regardless of which I choose. So I'm going to go to fetch. And usually down here, we should see there some information about the program working on doing what I want. And the results of my actions is now that I have a window with the sequence for the protein and down here a browser, another window, yet another window that is going to show me the annotations that the Uniprot has for this protein. Now that is very useful because even if I don't have the structure, now I have a way to know what's on the web page, what's on the database for this protein and according to the sequence. So as you can see by selecting, oh, that is odd. By selecting that information within Chimera, now I have the sequence and I have information such as uh, the positions of the helices, strands, turns, um, conflicts in the sequence, a place where there, there could be a post-translational modification, that is a phosphosearing in this case, the metal ion binding site, the metal yeah, iron binding site, the other one, so the histidines that are conserved as we have seen before, the methionine that is removed, and all of this except the methionine is the mature protein for a hemoglobin subunit epsilon, as, as it says here. So that is quite cool, quite useful, and we can even do something similar to the sequence uh, alignment that we perform on the website straight here in Chimera. With this window raised that is selected, you can go to edit and find this option of add sequence. With that option, we'll get another window, this one, that it's kind of connected to what you already have on Chimera, but also can download sequences straight from Uniprot. And you notice it follows the same kind of pattern. You can get the code or directly the name of the gene because this is only going to get us the sequence. So it doesn't matter if the protein has ton of structures, tons of structures or not. So what I'm going to do is select another one, another one of the sequences we have here. Uh, and I'm going to select this, this time the 
hemoglobin subunit Z. Z. I'm going to paste it here, not in the, the window to open the structures, as it was called, but this one that is going to directly add a sequence to this window. If everything works, this window should grow, grow in size. And now we have a single window that can contains the notes, the annotations for hemoglobin subunit, hemoglo homo sapiens, hemoglobin subunit Z, and uh, homo sapiens, hemoglobin subunit Epsilon. Mm -hmm. Depending on which one we will select, we'll get the annotations for that specific. Notice that all of these windows can be changed in size at any given moment. And we can also use the, once this window is selected, these menus over here for, for example, show the consensus. As I click on the header, the consensus one, there's a new line on the sequence alignment that, oh, sorry, I click on the one, on the wrong one, that show us a letter, a point or a dot where there is no alignment a lowercase letter where there's sequence that is conserved but different, that is not identical, and capital letters for sequences that are very similar or identical. So you will notice here that for the methionine that was not well aligned, it says that because there's only one residue in one side, it should be a dot. Where we have a valine and a methionine, lowercase methionine is what's shown because both are considered hydrophobic amino acids and there's maybe a reason that I don't know that methionine sh is chosen as the representative. Histidine in this case, maybe because it's the biggest. Isoleucine, uh, sorry, L for leucine because both are hydrophobic. This one is aromatic. T, capital letter and red because this one is exactly the same amino acid. So as I start this sentence, I said, that this alignment is kind of odd because the methionine is not aligned, but the rest is aligned. So maybe this gap over here is not the best. This, it, this could be fixed by realigning the sequences here within UCSF Chimera. There's two options for doing that, Clostal Omega and Muscle. And I usually prefer Muscle. Down here we can see, yeah, it didn't improve. Maybe, no, I actually didn't catch what changes happened. This gap and this one. Oh, sorry, this one. So after the alignment, we can always find the percent identity comparing all sequences in this instance. It's only two as well as longer sequence length that is well let's see non-gap columns in common that is probably better that is it's going to ignore the gaps so hemoglobin epsilon is identical against itself it's 40 percent identical against zeta or set this reply window is a window that is going to show everything that is going on in the program so far, this is the only action that happened within the program that gave us back information. You can always select what's in here and copy it to another place or just clear it and straight up save it. Why these buttons are important here? Because if you are running any of these analysis and you want the data for later, well, this is exactly what you will do with the data. Save it, copy it and paste it elsewhere or just erase it. Uh, here, I, I just closed it, but that is not, it's relative, that is, it's closed. But if you go to the main window and call in favor, it's the reply log, there it is still with the information. This window has to be intentionally cleared. Or if you close the program, it will be clear. But it's this information won't disappear if you just close the window. Let's, uh, let's add another sequence. So we have Epsilon and Seth. Let's add Delta.
-hmm. Notice these two align better, epsilon and delta. They start very similar. I'm gonna keep loading a couple of sequence more. So we have um, delta, z, epsilon. Let's load alpha, beta, and the gammas. These are gonna be easy because we just need to change one letter in this naming scheme that they have. So, oh, did I close my window? No, here it is. Here goes alpha. Okay, now let's do beta. And of course, if I'm mistaken in the code name I'm using, the program is gonna tell me that I made a mistake, not gonna be able to load much. So G1, and actually those errors are uh, displayed in a very cryptic manner. I'm gonna just make one of such, such uh, one of such mistakes so that you can see the result. According to the Uniprod, there's HBG1 and 2. I don't see HBG3, for example. I'm going to make that mistake on purpose and so that you can see the error message. So, um, yeah, here we go. So as you can see, because of the way it's written, it's kind of difficult to understand. So index error, list index out of range file uh, and here is the python script that do, do this in line 82 in map uniprot name id fields line split so, so this is actually part of the code what line is not being let's say successfully answered but if you try to understand what you did wrong it's kind of difficult and what this error means pretty much is that this information is somehow incorrect it the program doesn't know if it doesn't exist, just that it cannot get it. So I'm going to return it to the actual number that we want, which is number two. That one work. And now we have basically the same sequences that we had on the Uniprot, except, of course, we don't have myoglobin, cytochrome C, uh, what was the brain one? Okay, I can't believe I don't remember the name, but the brain globin, not haptoglobin, no, it's not here, is it? Oh yeah, this list can be expanded. Um, cytoglobin, no, that was not the one. Oh, there's a couple of subunits that I missed. I'm going to sort this alphabetically just to make sure I have everything. Or everything I want at least, maybe not everything. Alpha adducina, cytoglobin, neuroglobin, right? Haptoglobin, hemoglobin. Yeah, it's not here. So that that's fine. For the time being, I don't want them. What I want to do is go back to this and try to realign with this time not muscle but clostal. I'm leaving the default settings because I don't think we need anything else, but just so that we get a very decent alignment. So for how to evaluate an alignment? Well, we need at least to know something about the protein. An easy thing to recapitulate here is that we know that there's metal ion binding sites. So those amino acids, amino acids should be conserved. Why? Because all of these proteins have the same function. And that seemingly happened. They seemingly have an initiator, an initiator on methionine, so maybe another gap should be added over here. 
And some of them have modifications to phosphosyrene or tyrosine or trionine. Some of those are likely to be conserved, but not all of them. And probably the secondary structure, the helical parts of the protein. Now, these windows, uh, that is the browser for the subunit that we have selected, is not going to be able to select everything on all of these structures, but it's going to be able to select a couple of things. We can do something similar by looking up the consensus. I'm going to select... Here we go. So here, this is one of the histidines that are... That it's a binding site for the heme group. And then, if we look up and down this column, every single one of these proteins contains that histidine. I'm going to select the other one, and the same is true. Not only you can see that, but up here we have the capital letter H in red. That means that residue is absolutely conserved. Whereas this is a way to actually or to quickly review this consensus, there's other ways to show this information. One is the charge variation. This is interesting because it's not only charge. That is, yeah, amino acids that in one protein have a charge, but then in another have a different one, or amino acids that have no charge, but now have charge. But it can also show how far different they are. So here, for example, there's plenty of lanes, for example, this one, where there is no color, no lane. Alanine, isoleucine, asparagine, and treonine do not have charge. So they are considered the same, just for purposes of the charge. Of course, they are different amino acids. Here, where we have a tyrosine, uh, treonine, valine, asparagine, and a lysine, and several treonines, this is considered as a small change in the sense that even though there were very many amino acids without charge and suddenly there's a lysine, there's only w it's only one of the sequences. As opposed to this case where we have alanine, lysine, a positively charged residue, proline, 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 and glutamic acids. These are negative. So here, there's not only one change, but two changes that actually give us opposite charges. Same can be seen here. Histidine probably considered as a positive amino acid and glutamic as a negative are changes that are dramatic. Here, histidine, which can be a positive amino acid and arginine, are considered the same. I'm gonna, so as you can see, both consensus and charge variation can give you pre information relevant for the structure and the function. This is the conservation. This is gonna highlight as the, as the top of these bars, well, the taller the bar, the higher the conservation, and the lower the bar, the more variation. And the regions with more variations are for better or worse, concentrated here where there's gaps and in other places where there's actually several gaps. Uh, well, uh, as you can see, you cannot, as far as I know, you cannot calculate a tree here, although you can display it. If I were to, I'm gonna close this window or maybe since I showed you how to save your basket in in the Uniprot website. I'm not gonna close it here. I'm gonna show you this. Under file in save session, there you can find this save session action that is gonna save wherever you want in your computer, a file, a Python file that contains a script, a terrible script in the sense that it's very convoluted of what to be done with this information to arrive to exactly what we had here. I'm not going to save it, but if you want to save it, this is the place to do it. So I'm going to close this window. And I'm going to go back to Uniprot, where I didn't do anything. I'm going to select the proteins we were analyzing, which is the hemoglobin subunits, alpha, beta, delta, epsilon, gamma, 1, 2, and set add them to the basket and in the basket 
select them all and align. What's the purpose of this alignment? To save the tree and open it in Chimera, as well as the alignment, right? Maybe I, here I can improve the alignment that left some of those metionines outside of the places where I should, uh, where I wanted to have an homology reading for these sequences. So here we are back at this window. Here is the alignment. Notice that something similar happened again. That is, these metionines that should be aligned here at the beginning are displaced. I think it's not terrible, but it's something to be aware. In general, or at least uh, a couple of years, a couple of decades ago, when I had a class on how this is done, computationally speaking, the regions where there's gaps, as well as the beginning or the ends of these protein sequences, are the hardest to align. So, so this is not unexpected. Down here we have the tree generated by this alignment, which places the gamma versions of hemoglobin very close together, then uh, beta and delta, and then alpha as well as Z as the most divergence. In this uh, section over here, in downloads, we can just click there, go to I'm going to save it as a FASTA, an uncompressed FASTA, which here it is. I'm going to select it and I'm going to copy it into a text editor. I have this one, but any should work as long as it's not rich text format. And that means no word, no saving as doc or docx or anything else, just old fashioned text. So I'm going to save this as uh, desktop as test and I'm gonna add the extension fast to indicate that it's a FASTA file and once that is done I'm gonna try to open it in Chimera so this instance instead of going to file uh, sorry to file fetch by ID I'm gonna go to open and here I'm gonna have to find where is my desktop Mm -hmm. desktop uh -huh. e and I'm looking for text fast of course I'm going to tell it already that it's a FASTA ah ok it wants a full FASTA name let's see Yeah. Oh, but it didn't import the tree. Ah, so I was mistaken. However, it did import this new alignment, which doesn't seem that different. Was looking, yeah, histidine. This region, notice that this region that contains one of these histidines that is very important for the binding of the ion the iron it's conserved and here is the other those are very easy to find because those histidines are really really conserved among prot among proteins that are binding oxygen okay but i didn't set out to show you this i set out to show you how to use not only the sequence alignment that as we have already presented in uniprot but how to take advantage of the sequence alignment and now the structures okay so this is going to be a little bit tricky now i'm going to close this window to have it empty and i'm getting a little bit hot i'm going to open a door over here to get a little ventilation please um, i apologize if there's a lot of noise from the outside but but i don't want to overheat here Okay, back. So first of all, what do we need? We need the structures. And this time, because this search has already given us the sequences we need, I'm going to do another trick here. 
and I'm gonna go for simple in this case. I'm not gonna, well actually, given that all of the hemoglobin proteins or subunits except alpha and beta have few few structures, I'm, um, I'm gonna omit those two. And this is gonna be tricky regardless. So I'm gonna start with dry clicking on hemoglobin subunit delta and open a new tab. And I'm gonna go straight to structure. So as you can see, these are the two structures reported and the even just what we see in the colors, there's four subunits. And you can also intuit that by just finding this. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, I don't know how to use this well enough, apparently. Yeah, better. Uh, just by finding these ends of the proteins that are not connected between them. This is going to be always the case for these proteins because hemoglobin in humans is a tetramer. So in general, these are going to be crystallized as tetramers. I don't think that there's any case where this does not happen. So we have to deal with that. Uh, I have said before, maybe not in this video, but in others, that the resolution does not mean quality. So for the purpose of this example, I'm going to ignore that and I'm going to go with the structure with the highest resolution, the 1SHR. And this time on Chimera, I'm going to go to PDB to fetch a structure by, P, uh, by ID, PDB, and the code. I think it doesn't make any difference if you use lowercase or capitals, but I'm going to stick to capitals because that's the kind of person I am. Um, by default, this is the way proteins will look once loaded in Chimera. I personally like more color just just to see them not not for any particular reason so I will go to presets first interactive one ribbons and that changed the color but I don't like black background so I'm gonna go to presets again and this time publication one silhouette rounded ribbon and this is more or less something that I like I still will modify it but not now just just this is just for show now how to know which one is the actual hemoglobin uh, which one we're looking for <laughs> delta right because if this is a tetramer and if you remember your biochemistry that means that there's alpha or beta and delta well you can go to tools sequence and then PDB Uniprot info. Because this structure was downloaded straight from Uniprot, it's tagged, so to speak, as, as if it belongs there. So you can click on it on the PDB Uniprot struct, uh, info. And you will get another window. This one asks us which chain do you want? Well, because I don't know which chain I want, I click on the A, a and this one tell, tells me, oh sorry, not only tells me something, but it downloaded already the information. So chain A is the alpha chain. I'm going to click on B, and B is the delta chain. How can I tell them apart here? There's two ways. One will be to click here, and I don't know if you can catch it, but back here, uh, I'll show you later. No, what I'm going to do is focus on that. And if you can see, this chain now has a halo in green. It's hard to see when the background is white, but what about in black? You see the green halo? That is this selection. So this subunit is the beta chain that we were looking for. It's 
So if this pattern is conserved, A and C are going to be alpha and B and D are going to be beta. Mm -hmm. C is alpha. Now notice that every time I selected one of these sequences or these chains, the browser for the region is open as well as a sequence window. And they are linked. So if you close one, sometimes the other also go. So I'm going to close this alpha C chain just to see what happens with the other window. OK, and it disappeared. Knowing that I don't want the alpha, I'm going to close this window instead, not the sequence, and the sequence state. OK, that I think kind of makes sense, but the, because the browser, oh, but no, the browser is only working for one. Well, that is kind of complicated, but it's not a deal breaker, I think. I'm just going to close the alpha because we don't really want it. Well, actually, yeah, we could use it. I'm going to go get the alpha again. Mm -hmm. No, actually, sorry, I'm going to close this one again. Now, if I wanted here where I already opened the sequence for the delta subunit, if I wanted to add the alpha here, I will go here to the menu for add sequence. And instead of going to the Uniprod, I will go to the file. Sorry, sorry, to the structure. Here is the structure I just loaded and all of the chains. If I wanted to add chain A over here, I will just select it, as I just did, and click on Apply. And that should give me both sequences down here. I'm going to clear the selection just because I don't want to... Oh, okay. So that works, right? And I could also add, I have V, C, and D. Now, what I have here is the sequence for the four subunits in this structure to a and C that are the alpha subunit and B and D that are the <gasps> delta subunit. If I wanted to, I could realign these sequences and notice that this realignment is not going to change the fact that these structures are back here as a tetramer. Tetramer and oligomer. Here I'm working with the sequences for those four proteins independently of, of the structure or fairly independently. For example, something that will trace them or that will show that they are not entirely independent is that I can select this. And I can locate now a histidine here. One of the histidines is important for the oxygen binding. And I could do it in the other structures too. Oh, <laughs> I did my selection wrong somehow. No, no, no. I'm going to select everything and hide the spheres. Sometimes this process can be complex, but here we are. I'm going to try again. Ah, well, for whatever reason, it's only selecting one, but now we know that that one is conserved, so we could try and track it on the others, on the other subunits. Oh, that was exactly the same one. That was not useful. I'm not entirely sure now if this is working or not. Apparently it's not. I don't, and I don't understand why. Well, sometimes that seems to happen that this is uh, disconnected from that. But in this instance, it's for the best because we can align and check what the structures say. 
Now, this is something that sometimes is really difficult to explain in another way. It's that the, the gaps over here. If you remember all of the sequences that we aligned in the Uniprot and in Chimera, when we got the sequence from the Uniprot, had a methionine. And in none of these, well, actually in one of the sequences, the methionine is there, but it's with a red square and it's absent in the others. Usually this information, this red square, comes from the PDB itself. And it means that that residue may have been there in the protein, but in the crystallization, in the st structure interpreted from the X-ray diffraction, that residue is missing. And it's missing over here. Totally missing. Not, not, it's not known if it was supposed to be there. Here, it was supposed to be here in the sequence, but it's missing. Okay? So these are missing, they are not aligning. And over here in the gaps, now we can do something that we couldn't before, and it's go take a look at what is happening in these gaps. Even though the sequence says that there's a gap, well, the structure is continuous, right? No, no such gaps. or at least none that we can see. Usually gaps where there's missing structure, you see lines ending and dotted lines between them. So what this means is really that one protein is bigger than the other and when you align the sequence, because there's a difference in size, it appears as these gaps. But there is no way to appear distinguish that from actually or regions that are actually missing from the structure. So sometimes that that requires a little bit more digging into what's going on in the structure. So I'm going to close this one and let's try to find another example. Oh, yeah, so to close everything, there's two ways. You could close Chimera or if you are going to keep working with Chimera, you can go to File and Close Session. And here Session means pretty much everything you have done in Chimera up to this point. You can save your session or close it. And if you close it, only the information that you had loaded before disappears. It's pretty useful when you don't, you don't want to just close it. You just want to clean it and start it over. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, this is not my search window. I'm going to go back into the search. And to close this session, I'm just going to show you what happens or what would be the case of a protein that is missing a few pieces. And for that, I guess I'm going to try to use haptoglobin. Maybe this, this is not entirely a good idea. That is, I haven't seen that protein before. Maybe it's not missing pieces, but I'm going to gamble here. Okay, it looks... Uh, it looks pretty complete. No, not a good example. Well, proteins as big as this one, oh, of course, doesn't have a structure. That is common. Okay, this is a good example of what happens when only pieces of a protein are, are uh, identifying the structure. What you get is pieces that are seemingly suspended in space. This is not so because this was determined in a solvent and the places where there's known there's sequence known to be or to exist but is not present in the structure as depicted as these dotted lines
sorry i need to make my way to access the chat a little bit easier these are all nmr structures which will be difficult to see on camera and, and i'll cover that in a future episode um let's see Here. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this one on camera so we can see exactly what I'm talking about not only on the structure size side but on the sequence 4k y9 4k y9 oh this is gonna be a big one well big that was a megabyte so here we go first I'm gonna clean up the display Mm -hmm. and maybe black is not bad here you can see here this region where the structure ends but it's, n it's not only left empty there's this dotted line joining these regions and there is a even bigger one over here between these two ends what does that mean that means or most likely means that this structure where when it was solved there was no information to reconstruct that section. I'm going to open the sequence and I'm going to go first to this option for sequence. Um, I don't know. Oh, well, a very easy way to know which chain you're looking at is just to put the mouse on top of the window. And there you can read Searing 162P and P is the chain. So I'm going to select that one. And here we go. Now, as you can see, there's regions there are several regions that are highlighted in red and that means even though this protein should contain these sequences they cannot be reconstructed three-dimensionally with information from the x-ray diffraction i'm not i'm no crystallographer but this is fairly common in many structures not this well maybe i i'm exaggerating i don't know the actual statistics but this is it's not uncommon to find this i'm gonna use the ability of selecting sequences here to try to find where these gaps belong so here's one ce cysteine glutamic is this end and there's a gap up to this lysing and isoleucine as you can see the gap is really big this one over here a proline which i don't know where is it Oh, it's here on the other side of the protein. Here there's a proline, then a gap of two leucines and another proline. And sometimes the gap, the gaps may look really, really big. Some sometimes the gaps are really, really big, but it looks like that because we have ribbons. If I am to change this view to all atoms, so the gaps also a little bit harder to see will be obviously smaller now in this representation i do believe that we could insert a couple of uh, leucines and make this fit others well i mean you could do it manually add, add two leucines and minimize them energy minimize them and reconstruct that region but this other region missing over here is not only bigger but encompasses 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 residues so this is likely to be a loop but it's big so reconstructing this by eye will be just probably even worse than guessing numbers for the lottery so i'm not gonna do it and, and later in a few episodes we should probably cover how to reconstruct uh, this type of locations this type of missing sequences by using information from other sequences so at any rate um i guess i'm gonna close it here because i just wanted to show you this information ah, in fact you know there's one more thing i'm gonna show you 
to get this sequence window, what I did was go to uh, tools, sequence, and sequence. So I got the sequence straight from the structure file. Okay, this sequence came straight from the, uh, straight from the structure file, and it contains the information of where are pieces of sequence that are missing. Now I'm gonna select this time the option for PDB Uniprot info. I'm gonna select again chain P. And now we're gonna have another sequence window, but this is gonna be significantly different for several reasons. First, again, the sequence here on top came from the PDB file from the structure file, from the structure determination. And down here, we have another window that it's obviously larger. And this one contains the sequence for this protein, but because it comes from the Uniprot, it's mostly only the sequence. So everything that is known as a sequence of this protein is here. Now we have these purple rectangles that what are trying to indicate is that everything that is in purple is something that it's in this sequence for this protein for human but it's absent from the structure previously we didn't have this information that is what's absent from the structure because we didn't have the structure but because now we do that information in display here and as this is something very common for proteins that are large and what is large well i will say that roughly about 400 500 residues it's a large protein it's very hard to crystallize large proteins. So this is something that's gonna happen frequently in larger proteins, sometimes even in small proteins. And sometimes there's large proteins that even though they don't seem to have large regions of secondary structure, they are perfectly crystallized. So take this with a grain of salt, always check both sequence windows. That is important if you are if you wonder why a crystallized protein doesn't have all the sequence, well, now you have an idea of how to first verify that and make sure that it's there and why it is there or not. It's sometimes just completely experimental. So there's nothing to be done about that other than do an experiment. But now we got this other window with the information from the Uniprot. I'm going to make it slightly bigger because now, uh, yeah, I think that's probably a Mac issue. Now I can use the information on this window straight from the Uniprot to find things on the structure. Let's say that this protein is interesting to me because it's uh, glycosylated and here we see a glycosylation site. I can click on it. It's selected even though I cannot see it. And in this visualization window, I can go to actions focus. That focus, what it's going to do is based on my selection, focus on that selection. Oh, and apparently it's not shown. And the reason it's not shown should be easy to see here. So when I selected like a selection site, it's going to select the sequence in white. And what you see is that the sequence in white is precisely in one of those regions that was not solved by the crystallography. So if I wanted to understand the effect of that glycosylation on the structure, well, it turns out that I can't because it's not there, which is kind of sad. There is a lipid moiety binding region that should have been selected in blue. And it's also way outside of the sequence. So you notice nothing is blue in this sequence from the PDV file, but in the whole sequence it is. So it's easy to see that it's way outside of the structure that was solved. Kind of sad. Uh, acyl methy acetyl methionine, well, that is also outside. A phosphoserine outside. This phosphoserine is actually inside of the crystallized region, so we could go there and focus. And yeah, it looks totally looks like a serine. Nitrogen, car alpha carbon, beta carbon, and oxygen. No hydrogens because this is crystallography. But now we have room to do other experiments. And I'm talking about in silico experiments here. We could modify this phosphoserine so that, sorry, this serine so that it reflects this characteristic that is not present here. Let's see. I'm going to bring up this both uh, sequence windows. 
Uh, there's several phosphotyrosine, both, well, one, two, both outside of the sequence that is represented in the structure. Uh, those two are also out, and that one too. So sadly, the way this structure was solved, or the structure that was solved itself, doesn't allow for a large analysis or for a significant analysis of all of the pro parts of the protein that could be post-translationally modified. There's a note for some modifications, mutations that will affect the entrance to the cell membrane, which could be important. Uh, loss of glycosylation site. Funny, that I, was that the glycosylation site? Yeah, it was the glycosylation site identified above. And because this protein has several annotations, there's annotations for the function, sequence variation, finding patients with pathological significance. So this protein, it's while not very complete in the crystallization, has tons of information that can be used in its study, not only through the sequence, but now also through the structure. So I'm going to stop here for this instance. Uh, I hope you have seen new things on how to use Chimera, how to both analyze sequence and structure, and of course, bring together information from the Uniprot, the database that contains annotations for protein structure, function, and many other things. And we are slowly going to move throughout following episodes into how to do structural analysis and then modifications and then further modeling such as docking and molecular dynamics. Since I'm going to keep this short, I think we have been here for an hour or so. I'm going to stop it. Uh, you can always subscribe to this channel on Twitch. I also have a YouTube channel where this video is going to be uploaded later for static consumption. And well, you are welcome to come back. I do this Tuesdays noon, Mexico City time, although I'm not in Mexico City. And uh, well, if you have any requests for software analysis, just drop it around here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I should be able to add something here. I, I, I'm broadcasting from a different computer than usual, so I don't have everything set up so give me a second and i'll get a link for my youtube channel of course the youtube channel goes back a couple of years and you can find other things that i have already analyzed uh, or shown how to do not everything is a tutorial so you can also explore to find uh, well miscellaneous things mostly mostly science but there's a couple of uh, videos in 3D of some events that I was invited to and I, uh, well, I wanted to document. Here you go. Um, oh, of course, you cannot see that, right? There we go. <laughs> I hope you can see that, that that's my channel. Uh, does it show? I just had to, I just created a quick impromptu banner. Does it show? No, not yet. Okay, good. Thank you for the feedback in the chat, guys. It's been a pleasure to have at least one viewer and well, uh, see you later. Have fun, use your tools wisely, and yeah, have fun. See you around.